Well, what we're talking about here is a response to a body of evidence that's been built up over five years through the anecdote to evidence work that was published a year ago and through a series of visits and conversations with every diocese in the country. And from that we have understood the scale of issues that face the church, the trends which have existed in the past with declines in attendance and congregations, and the projections now of where that goes given the age profile that's built up over the last three decades. And all we're doing here is seeking to respond in every aspect to the challenge of ensuring that the Church of England continues its unique and wonderful role to be active in every community in this country. We've got several task groups and it's important to recognise that we are responding. We didn't sit down here and say we must have five task groups. We sat down, examined the evidence and for a, each reason a different task group came into being. We need to help the bishops of today and the leaders of tomorrow to ensure that they can supplement their wonderful churchmanship and spirituality with the other skills that they need and to make sure that people coming into senior roles in the future are fully equipped. We needed to recognise that the formulae by which funds are distributed at the moment don't bring with them an accountability and certainly don't bring a focus on the numerical and spiritual growth, the discipleship growth to which we all aspire. Then we noticed that, or the evidence told us, that the number of priests will decline rapidly with retirement. We need to refresh and rejuvenate the priestly force. We need to think about how we develop the numbers of lay leaders and ministers that the diocese told us that they want. And that created a third task force, while a fourth was about the whole program of simplification, where we know that so much people want to can be hidebound by historic practices and procedures which were put in place for different reasons and different times. And if you're going to do all of those things, you need to make sure that your small but perfectly formed engine room at the centre is operating to the right agenda, is doing the right things, is equipped to do the pieces that others can't, because we'll always apply the principle of subsidiarity. So you had five task groups come into play, not because somebody sat down and said, let's have five, but because five different and quite specific needs were identified. There was no correlation between the levels of prosperity of the communities which dioceses serve and the distribution of the funds. Uh, there was no accountability. Actually, if you examined it, if a diocese did well financially, it penalised itself because the distribution from the centre would be cut. That's counterintuitive, isn't it? Um, so, uh, so we had all the evidence to us uh, we had what the diocese has told us uh, and we had the, uh, the ability to, to see the unintended consequences of the current formula. We've had two bishops already tell us that we have less than a decade to address the issues or else we will see the church wiped out of large parts of their bits of rural England. That's the sort of challenge that faces us. We have to grasp certain nettles and we have to grasp them together. But do you know much more positively, what this is about is sowing the seed of the Church of Christ of the future, building on the great things that are happening now. So yes, the consequences of inaction or failure would be horrible. What we're trying to do is change the balance now so that those flames of growth which are already burning can become much more apparent, much more widespread and that they can be nurtured so that this church rises again in glory. So what we're looking to do here is to identify how best to use the funds that are distributed centrally from the church commissioners. These are a small part of total church funds uh, the non-pension element amounting to 40-odd million per annum, but they're still significant. 
We identified that at the moment the funds are distributed on the basis of the assets and income of each diocese. We felt that there should be a very clear link to the deprivation of the communities that those dioceses serve and that the money should be dedicated for work in the most difficult communities where by definition the amount of voluntary support is likely to be less. And we also felt that the funds should be I, um, ring fenced so that they can be invested in growth whether in those communities or not. And that with that distribution should come a mutual accountability. Now look, this is not about having a head office, anything but. What we're saying is could dioceses and other people get together to create a platform for mutual challenge and accountability so that we can all understand or you can understand at local level how the funds are being distributed, for what reason, what they are trying to achieve and then that group monitors progress. And we want the Interdiocesan Finance Forum to meet and work out exactly how that works. I admire uh, Synod. I admire the organs of the church. I think we have to be forward looking and think really hard about what those research papers and mathematical projections are telling us. Not because anybody wants the numbers to go that way, but we do need to understand the scale of urgency that exists. Then I'd like to get to the point where as many as possible of synod and diocesan synods and people who never sit in a synod can be not just the recipients of this change programme but the advocates of it. I'd like them to understand it's not our programme, it's theirs. And we will certainly be open to listening as to how things can be improved. The implementation will only be beneficial if it takes place at every grassroots. This isn't about one strategy about the Church of England. It is about the Church of England supporting the 40-odd dioceses in each of their strategies. And we recognise, of course, that each diocese is as good as the parishes in it. It is absolutely about responding to what the research and what every diocese has told us. It has to now be in the response of Synod and everybody else who considers these papers. It now has to be a question of how they, with us, can take this forward. And I'll always use this phrase, so that the risen Christ can be restored to the centre of this country, its conscience and its culture.